What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Josh. In this video, we'll be working on my Shindawa 300S chainsaw. Um, this is gonna be kind of an odd fix. All it needs is the fuel line. I just replaced the carburetor recently and uh, it's been leaking fuel when you tip it and that's not good for dropping trees. Um, I don't drop many trees with this, it's a pretty small saw, but uh, when I do, when I'm doing uh, limbing, anything like that, it's nice not having leaking fuel everywhere. So, um, the reason I'm doing this video, though, is it's got a proprietary uh, fuel line. It's got two sort of grommets, I would call them, in the fuel line. And so I'm going to show you guys how to replace that. So let's get started. All right, so this is the replacement fuel line. You can see it's got these two grommet-type things in it. One of these seals against the tank. The other one seals against the air box. Um, for this reason, you can't just go and replace the fuel line with any uh, standard diameter. While this kind of sucks, uh, it's smart on their part because you have to buy their parts. Unfortunately, this saw is getting kind of old. It's probably 20, maybe 25 years old. Still runs great. Just put a new carburetor on it. Um, but this was hard to find. I found this on eBay, and it was out of stock for several months. I just kept it in my watch list, and uh, the seller told me when it was back in stock. I'll put a link if you guys need it and the part number, so if it, the listing is not available anymore, uh, you can still look up the part number and hopefully find it that way. Um, basically, I'm going to pull the top cover off here, pull the spark plug off, and we will go from there. So let's get started. So what I'm going to do now is pull the Allen bolts out of the tank mount. I'm tempted to just leave these caps out because they really don't help much. I mean, they keep sawdust out, but they're so hard to get back in. They're not that easy to get out either unless you got a good pick. out completely <sighs> that's not good hmm that is really really not good all right hold on let me figure this out I'll be right back so these are supposed to be Three millimeter bolts, Allen bolts. This one's not really living up. Luckily, this one is moving where the torques. Kind of. So I used a T15. Oh yeah, that's completely rounded out. I'll probably have to cut a slot in that before I put it back in so it can be gotten out with a uh, flathead screwdriver. Here I am thinking this is going to be like a five minute job and I forgot what a pain this saw is to take apart. I have had this apart before, I just it's been a while. 
And I forgot. I don't normally use vice grips, so I'm too lazy to find the right wrench or socket. I might put these two back in, although this one, I remember this one was a pain because the rubber's kind of swollen up from the bar and chain oil. Go ahead and pull these plugs out of here. And this whole engine assembly should come away from that tank. That one's just about done too. Man. Okay. So this will come away from the rest of the unit here, aside from the fuel line, which we gotta pull out. Go and pull the fuel cap out. Grab our needle nose pliers here. I'm not going to replace the filter because it's been running just fine. So I'm just going to leave it for right now. Okay, get that off of there, set it in a clean spot on the paper towel, and then this fuel line is ready to come out, just sort of stretch it until it comes out, there it is. Alright, so the rest of this unit is free to come out now. leaking right there in between the tank and the air box. Pull the air filter out. Okay. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess there's not much to it but to do it, right? Pull that out with some needle nose pliers. Just like that, the old fuel line is out. So, uh, the only thing I'm going to pull off of here is this little spring retainer, which helps keep the filter on. Yeah, this was pretty toasted. You can try just pulling it through. See what happens. You know what? I might grab some oil to hopefully let this slide in better. Is it going to in it? Yeah, it does have a little bit in it. There we go. A little bit of two-stroke oil. It's not going to hurt anything. But it might help.
right, so that's in. Finally. Good grief, that sucked. Although I gotta say, that's a lot tighter than the old one. That's definitely where it was leaking. Okay. Next step is getting that few, uh, filter on there. Just pull that line out with the pick. ring over it. Get a filter on it. Man, this thing is making a fool out of me. This thing sucks. Okay, there we go. And then that little ring just needs to come down over it. Come on. So that part's done. Very happy. Now the fun part. Getting it back into the air box. Okay, let me think here. Let me get a little bit of that oil, put that on the tip of this grommet here. Yeah, that's much better. Again, tip this back. Come on. There we go. Feed the line back up, and then I'm going to carefully make sure it's nice and clean most carburetors have a little filter in them to help with that but it's good just to double check it when you put it in
All right, that one's in. That was much easier than the bottom. So I'm going to clean off a screw here. Feed that into the line. And then pull out any junk. And I think now it's ready to go back on. And we'll fill it up with fuel and run it. Pull that forward a little bit. Okay, that's where it's supposed to be. There we go. Okay, so this is ready to go back all together. Um, the only thing you got to remember is just keep this choke linkage the way that it should be, and you shouldn't have any issues. As much as I love this saw, <laughs> this job was an absolute pain. But let's get it done. All right, it's all back together. Put some gas in it. All right, just put some fuel in it. Let's fire this thing up. Beautiful. All right, mission accomplished. Thanks for watching.